This is Paris's northeastern neighborhood, Butte Chaumont. This area and the rest of Paris will soon test hotels, airlines, and travel agencies on how effectively and precisely they manage their pricing data. The difference in traveler demand for Airbnb only in Butte Chaumont two weeks before July 26, 2024, and after is 1,057%. On average, Paris will see a demand growth of 500%. What happens after July 26? The Olympics is coming to town. While this demand surge is good news for travel businesses handling Paris tourism, such events have another side to it. Airlines, hotels, and travel agencies are now crunching the numbers to find the optimum prices for their products to capitalize on the boom, but prevent travelers from going to a competitor. That requires reliable data. So let's talk about what data management is and how it has become so critical for travel businesses. Whatever travel business you're in, you deal with three key things. Travelers, inventory, flights, rooms, tours, and internal operations, booking management, staff, infrastructure, you name it. Each of these areas not only requires data to run effectively, it also generates more data. For example, to offer a personalized tour, you need to understand in advance whether this particular traveler belongs to the couples or family with kids segment. If they book, you'll know how many days before departure it happened and their ancillary preferences to use this data for personalized offers next time. In terms of inventory, you must gather data on distribution channels and prices. Would the prices differ for travel agencies, MetaSearch websites, and business travel booking systems? As for internal operations, you must track which suppliers and distributors you use, how you process payments and invoices. A lot of data! Data management is all of that chaos, unstructured data, every process that, that we have. Um, taking data elements from social media, unstructured data, data from partners, data from other businesses, and trying to bring it all into one place. This is Bradley Watts, Vice President of Digital Product and Analytics at Cornerstone Information Systems a company specializing in automated travel management and expense technology solutions. Data management ends up being a team uh, and technology, right? A skill set and a technology to organize all that data so that we can then analyze it and take it back out to the business. And travel businesses, whether they accept it or not, are, in fact, data businesses. So how does data management work? Picture an international airport with its arrivals, departures, massive terminals, and endless choreographed flow of passengers and luggage. Like passengers and luggage, data points, pieces of information, must arrive at your business from various sources. You have to integrate them. You must store data in a central place, govern the rules of this constant flow, and ensure its security. Only then can you effectively analyze the data, combine the points from different sources, and predict the future, such as the optimal prices for your hotel during the Olympics. So let's start with data integration, which basically means automatically collecting data from its sources. While you can analyze data right at its sources, integration allows you to combine those sources to arrive at new insights and use the analytical tools of your choice. Let's imagine a middle-sized hotel in Rome that wants to determine the best prices for their rooms for this summer season. The prevailing part of needed data comes from internal sources like Property Management System, PMS, and a Channel Manager, core hotel tools that keep track of things like reservations, guest details, payments, and room allocation. The hotel has an internal history of bookings, occupancy rates, and other revenue indicators from previous years. But what about the information from external sources? What are competitors' prices? What will the weather be like? Will there be sports or cultural events in Rome that will increase demand? Additionally, the hotel must understand booking patterns across various channels, like online travel agencies and direct website bookings. If the property advertises on Google Hotels or Kayak, how many travelers click on the hotel's website? You can explore these sources separately, but combining competitors and your historical prices for the season to forecast optimal rates per channel would be nice. So, 
How does data integration work from a technical standpoint? Let's return to our airport metaphor. Same conveyor belts collect luggage, our data points, from different regional flights, data sources. In data management, this conveyor belt role is given to extract, transform, and load tools, or ETLs. Just like those suitcases, information is gathered, extracted from different origins. A property management system, channel manager, or third-party data provider to track competitor prices. Then the data is transformed right there on the belt, ensuring it's in the correct format and structure. For example, different sources may have inconsistent date formats or names for the same room type. Transformation makes data consistent, and records from different origins can be used together, just like ensuring all luggage tags are sorted to reach the correct destinations. Then it's sent, or loaded, to its final destination, the central database, akin to loading luggage onto the right aircraft. In travel, the integration task is more complex than in other industries. If we consider sectors like video streaming or social media, data is mainly centralized. Such platforms keep every click, video pause, post like, or topic preference within their ecosystem. Travel is a whole different story. Here, data sources are varied and decentralized, from online bookings to in-destination activities. Each source adds a fragment of the traveler's journey, creating a patchwork of information that needs to be carefully pieced together. For example, Abu Dhabi's Department of Culture and Tourism faced a similar challenge, integrating data from multiple sources to enhance tourism experiences. DCT used Informatica data integration tools to pull information from 17 different systems. This integration allowed them to create a unified view of data spanning hotels, museums, and tourist attractions. DCT's approach was to extract data from various origins, transform it for compatibility, and load it into a central system. Speaking of the central system, another crucial component of effective data management in travel is storage. I think it's the condition of travel. And that condition is it takes seven or eight different partners or companies from a GDS to a traveler, right? The supply, the demand, seven or eight different businesses and companies all touch an itinerary for someone to travel. Um, but then the traveler wants to see all that data in one place. And each one of those businesses want to see all of that data in one place. Um, and each process consumes data in order for it to be useful for the consumer, for the business. Keeping data in one place is synonymous with having a single source of truth. A marketing specialist at a travel agency can capture travelers' website behavior from user tracking tools. A revenue manager would consider dates before arrival, property, and its rates. A customer support operator would have access to an angry chat after the hotel didn't check the traveler in. Each of these sources tells its own story about a single person. These stories would be told to three different people in three different departments. A single source of truth would reveal a larger story of a traveler looking for the cheapest deals and choosing the hotel from a supplier that didn't deliver their low-cost promise. To have a single source of truth, you need a single storage. And there are two options, data warehouses and data lakes. Imagine a well-organized luggage room where each suitcase, bag, and backpack has its place, perfectly sized and tagged with an ID number. This setup is like data warehouses, where structured data is neatly stored in rows and columns of a table to be easily accessed for specific queries. Or consider a large storage where all types of luggage and cargo are kept in a pile, regardless of size, shape, or tag. This option is similar to a data lake, capable of storing diverse data forms, whether structured like purchase records and prices, or unstructured like reviews or social media posts. Data lakes help store raw data and allow you to decide how to transform and use it later. For example, you can use hotel reviews to understand customer sentiment and later decide to classify which amenities are mentioned in reviews people like more and which ones need improvements. However, modern cloud tools can combine both data warehouses and lakes. For instance, with its vast array of hotels worldwide, Marriott International needed a robust system to consolidate and analyze data for improved guest insights and service personalization. Marriott adopted cloud data warehousing, 
specifically IBM DB2, combining warehouse and lake features. You know, the big elephant in the room that nobody kind of talks about, but it's always there, right? That's security and governance of that data. Different systems in your travel business send you data in various formats. One spells out Florida, while another just says FL. You can't use these records together. Or worse, imagine if sensitive customer information, like credit card numbers, was leaked. This is where the significance of data governance and security is realized. Data governance in the travel industry is like the standardization of passenger name records, PNR, which is always a unique six-character code found on e-tickets and boarding passes. Imagine if every airline created PNRs differently, with varying lengths and formats, such as some using six characters and others having 25 digits with special characters. This inconsistency would render PNR useless as airlines and distributors couldn't reliably exchange PNR information. So data governance sets a unified language and format for data, ensuring clarity and efficiency. It also regulates how to gather this data and process it. Data security protects traveler information and transaction data from unauthorized access or breaches. Like airport security ensures passenger and luggage safety. It also includes complying with regulations like the EU's General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, which mandates strict control over personal data privacy, or standards like the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, PCI DSS, for secure card transactions. For example, Palladium Hotel Group, a Spanish chain with 40 hotels in six countries, faced difficulty managing data from diverse sources. Not only was their data distributed across internal databases, SaaS applications, and REST API connectors, but it was also unstandardized and not always of good quality. They used Talent's data management system to aggregate data and ensure its integrity. Let's say you managed to find all data sources, collect this information, bring it to one place, and take care of its consistency and security. But gathering data is only the first step. The real challenge and potentiality? Making sense of it. You need to analyze data. Let's take a traditional Gartner's Analytics maturity model. If you successfully integrate and store data, it's already enough for you to use visualization tools, so-called business intelligence, to combine and visualize data. This capability is your first level, descriptive, you can understand what happened, recognize trends, or plot the booking patterns against city events. Just looking at data, you can make conclusions and hypotheses, but to make them reliable, you must use more advanced data mining tools and reach the next level of diagnostic analytics, answering why things happen. For example, the system can capture that the occupancy drop in July coincided with the airline workers' strike back in May, making travelers hesitant to fly to your destination. The next level, predictive analytics, requires you to have machine learning systems to forecast future trends based on historical and current data. For example, you could suggest a significant price update and, considering booking patterns and demand, see how it will impact occupancy and the bottom line. The most advanced level of prescriptive analytics requires an AI system to give recommendations based on your data. For instance, it would estimate the price of elasticity, considering competitor prices, historical records and occupancy, and rates to suggest the best prices for an upcoming season. Some of the players are actively adopting such systems. Delta Airlines employs predictive analytics to anticipate disruptions. They proactively manage their schedules and keep passengers informed by analyzing weather patterns, flight operations data, and historical trends. So, data management is about making data useful. And while all of this may sound easy, the reality presents quite a few challenges for travel businesses. Despite tech advances, many travel businesses still rely on legacy software. For example, global distribution systems that aggregate flights across airlines for further reselling still sometimes exchange data with airlines using Edifact, protocol tracing back to the 80s. These systems often lack the capabilities to capture and share all data types required for advanced analysis. A significant hurdle is the skill set gap. 
As data management grows more sophisticated, the need for skilled personnel who can navigate these complex systems becomes paramount. Investing in training and development is a crucial requirement for businesses to stay ahead. I think there's a data literacy gap. That That's what it is, right? It's got to be I think of data first. I think of the input of the data into what I'm talking about. I think about the data that I'm outputting. I think of it in terms of lightweight message data. Um, I think of it in terms of I live in the matrix. Everything's right. Everything's numbers. And I need to and I need to understand how that applies. I need to understand things like bias in the conversations that I have about data. Right. So there's this data literacy thing um, that I think needs to play out in the industry. And finally, with the increasing emphasis on user privacy and data protection laws, managing privacy concerns is more important than ever. Businesses must ensure their data practices comply with regulations like GDPR and CCPA, safeguarding customer information. Standing in our data management airport, gazing out at the planes taking off, we're reminded that the future is full of surprises. A few years ago, the idea that large language models like ChatGPT could revolutionize every industry seemed far-fetched. Yet, here we are, witnessing a paradigm shift in how we interact with and process data. And these things won't go anywhere soon. AI is the next, right? Um, huge opportunity. And if you haven't used an LLM like ChatGPT, you need to go try it. It changes. It will change your view of how you are going to do work going forward. Just like a, a Google search did when we first got Google and you had access to all of that information. It's going to change how you do work and it's going to change um, how you connect to your customers. Today, the focus is shifting towards perfecting data for AI use and reaching prescriptive analytics levels never seen before. This shift means not only collecting and aggregating information, but refining it with further AI use in mind. And if you want to learn how generative AI will change businesses, watch this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.